Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an absolute must for those who wish to learn and then create. By now, you have probably heard about them due to their popularity, and for good reason. Yet, if you haven't, let me tell you a bit about their wide range of services that will surely pique everyone's interest. We as humans love learning new things and putting them to work, whether that be for an actual job or just for a hobby. With Skillshare, you will have access to thousands of different courses ranging from photography, web development, animation, and creative writing. I myself have used Skillshare before when I started my channel by learning about Premiere Pro Basics that was taught in about 20 minutes by awarded filmmaker Benjamin Ortega. After learning what he offered in his video, I was much more confident when editing videos. With Skillshare, you get the luxury of learning from the privacy of your own home and at your own pace. Another good thing is that you will find no distracting ads in any of the videos. So, whether you are just starting out and wanting to learn something new, or already have years of experience and just want to sharpen your skills even further, then Skillshare is an amazing tool to add to your expanding arsenal. And as an added bonus, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free premium membership trial so you can explore your creativity. So head on over to Skillshare after this video and find what fascinates you. If someone in your life went missing, what would you do? What would you actually do? Alert local authorities and wait for any sort of updates? Sitting by the phone for days on end, hopeful that some good news will be delivered at any moment? Would you go out and search for yourself, becoming your own detective and follow up on any kind of lead that you can find? Would you go online and see if you could find either answers or, at the very least, advice on how to handle the situation? Would you be at a loss for how to go about your day-to-day, -day, not knowing where a loved one could possibly be, or even if they were alive? It's a scary concept when you really put yourself in that situation. We all can watch true crime shows or listen to a podcast or watch a video online and tell ourselves or whoever is around that we would go about handling the situation a certain way. The truth is, once you realize that finding someone who is missing takes a lot more effort than how it is portrayed in television, when you fully take in the reality that daily over 600 people go missing globally without a trace, per year around 220,000 people. Stack that on with the numerous other crimes that occur, and you can see how difficult finding a missing person can actually be. This was, well, still is the case for one Redditor in particular. A user going by the handle, Elira Sand, made a post on the RBI subreddit, in which he detailed the recent events that circulated around his father's disappearance. What quickly followed seemed to be straight out of a book when OP's search led him to uncooperative law enforcement, shady neighbors, and literal dead ends. This is the story of one Redditor who is searching for his father. Dad missing since June 1st. Yesterday, I found messages in my spam folder on Facebook Messenger from one of my dad's friends concerned about him. She sent the first message on June 8th. Then, June 10th, she and her brother went with the police to do a welfare check. Once I found these messages, I immediately tried to call the number she had left, but saw on her Facebook that she had died on June 13th. Through my investigation, I found that she was found unresponsive by the same brother that visited my dad's with her. When she went with police on June 10th, they found that his car door was wide open, key was in the ignition, and the battery was dead. His front door was unlocked, and he and his dog were nowhere to be found. Police went again yesterday after I called. They had to cut the lock on his gate, and they found the same scene. It's a remote property, and he let it get really overgrown. 
a search is actually happening today. This just seems weird to me, but maybe I'm trying to make sense of nothing. My dad has been missing since June 1st. I don't really know the kind of company he kept either. Just hoping to get some more brain power to help me churn on this. Yesterday I went up and spent the day at my dad's property with search and rescue teams. They brought dogs out and searched for hours but came up with nothing. The lead investigator took his laptop and cell phone and is working on getting into his bank accounts. Last recorded activity for my dad is officially May 30th. They reported him as missing and if no leads come from what they've got, then it'll be transferred to missing persons in a couple of days. I'm not as concerned about the brother anymore. I found out that the woman and my dad met on a dating app. He was apparently very popular with ladies on there. And they had a bit of a tumultuous relationship. As it goes when dating several people at once, I imagine. She was in poor health, and I confirmed that from a voicemail that I heard from her where she sounded terrible. She apparently died from pneumonia. My dad had some angry voicemails from his girlfriends. One in particular was super angry and followed up with another voicemail about how her new boyfriend didn't want her hanging around my dad. That's my new top interest. My dad is 58. The police are still scanning his laptop and cell phone, so no updates there. His latest bank account activity was on May 27th. Apparently, the police didn't even listen to his voicemails on his house phone. So I went back to record those and to drop off a key to the investigator. I'm reaching out to a lawyer soon because I don't really know how I'm supposed to maintain his property. I did talk to the brother that went on the first welfare check with the now dead woman. He was very willing to talk with me. Someone wrote back to me from the deceased woman's account and warned me to be careful with him about the brother. I said I was sorry for her loss and she told me that the woman had a lot of people fooled. I got her number and need to follow up on that. It seems like a mess and I know my dad recently purchased vehicles from that family too. Currently, I'm trying to figure out who I can trust in his shit town. Everyone keeps warning me that nobody can be trusted and it's left me feeling paranoid and alone. So I'm trying to balance getting the word out and also protecting his property. I really appreciate everyone's advice and support and I'm surprised at how wonderful you all are. No real updates, I've been frustrated at the county's lack of follow up on the two viable leads, his latest love interest and the guy who went on the welfare check. They also haven't gotten all of his bank account subpoenas returned yet, so we still don't have any access to his large bank account. I blew them up about this on Monday and they actually hung up on me. I called the supervisor back who invited me to come down and sit with them. They basically sat me down to just say, based on his medical history, they think he probably just walked off and fainted. I continue to mention the mysteriousness around how his car and home were left. They mentioned all of the hogs and bears up near his land. They also mentioned how busy they are with cases that actually have bodies. Very tasteful fellas, as you can see. They are also hypothesizing that when his dog died, that was actually his last straw. It still doesn't explain where his body is. It seems like they are trying to construct the depressed man walks off story, not the man using dating app disappears story. Still have yet to get an attorney or private investigator. It's on the list. Everyone is really good at telling me what I ought to do. Meanwhile, I'm just wishing I could call dad and talk with him about how crazy his town and his friends are. This is what I meant earlier, when I said attempting to find somebody who is missing can very easily become extremely difficult to do. People don't just conveniently leave clues as to where they went or who has the answers. OP found this out firsthand. Unpacking everything that we just read, we have learned that his father has been missing for over a month. 
when the post was made on July 19, 2019. His first attempt at finding answers led him to his father's Facebook, where he saw messages to a woman who could be a potential girlfriend to his father. When OP searched more on Facebook, he discovered that the woman had died on June 13th. A few days before her death, the woman and her brother went to do a welfare check on OP's dad, and that was when the police became officially involved. As we learned from the post, police discovered several things that appear suspicious. OP's father's car door was left wide open. The key was still in the ignition, the front door was unlocked, and both the father and his dog were nowhere to be found. As the post continues on, OP talks more about his father living on a remote property, dating several women at once, and nobody seemed to know the type of people that he associated with. Going on even more into the post, the unusual police activity, or more so the lack of activity, was voiced out by OP. He claimed the police never took the voicemails that were left to his father by his angry girlfriends, which, given that he is missing, seems like at the very least a reason to speak to those who left those messages. Another thing that stood out as odd was when OP mentions talking to the brother of the woman who died that when he was messaging him, someone wrote to OP telling him to be careful with him, referring to the brother. OP continued communication with that person and had also been told by them that the woman who had died had a lot of people fooled. The cryptic nature of this is both concerning and very frustrating. The vague answers on anything only makes this harder for OP. He voices his frustrations by saying that he is constantly being told by people that the community cannot be trusted, adding that with the lack of answers from the police, and it seems fair to wonder if they even want to solve this case. Little updates have been made on the computer police took from OP's father's house, and they were still having issues getting into his bank accounts. I could see all of this being not out of the norm, but I also wonder if this is a common thing for law enforcement. If these kinds of hurdles happen when they are trying to get access to private information. But what is the most concerning is that police began to form a narrative around his father's disappearance, stating that based off of his medical history with depression, that he could have willingly disappeared. However, that would not explain why the dog was missing, why he didn't take his car, and why his house was left unlocked. It seems like when you throw in the multiple angry girlfriends and odd behavior of many of those involved, that it appears police were just trying to make something stick so it all went away. That was all the OP had for his post. Some commented that OP should check on local pounds or animal shelters to see if the dog was there. Others voiced out that the brother of the woman who died is very suspicious and should be questioned by the police. Unfortunately, no concrete answers could be provided, and for the time being, it stayed in this state. Until a little over a month later, when OP made an update. Well, I just wanted to thank all of you for the support on my last post. Unfortunately, Dad and the dog are still missing. Technically, his last activity was May 28th, where he was active on Facebook Messenger. The police still have his phone, laptop, and wallet. In fact, they've been logging onto his Facebook account and really confusing his friends who then believed he was back online. The most interesting update has been with the owners of the neighboring land. Dad would have them brush hog his land, and he actually didn't have running water for a couple of weeks and his thinking was that they hit a water line when they were doing some work. The last time myself and my uncle talked to him, he was trying to get them up to repair it, but it didn't seem to be going too well. So he had several jugs of water in his shop and was showering at a friend's place. It would be a miserable way to live. I've reached out to them for more information on that. Also regarding the neighbors, the husband came by to meet me on July 2nd, when they did the second welfare check and searched his land. He told me that he was friends with all of the police, and if I needed any help getting information from them, he owns a lot of the acreage in this county. He also told me that he recently killed a bear that supposedly 
was charging him and had apparently dug a grave with a backhoe to bury it. The police know about this and have used it to try to convince me about the possibility that an animal harmed my father. Most recently, however, the wife of this neighbor has reached out to me about renting one of the properties on his land. Dad wasn't living there and it is a really beautiful home. They had wanted to buy it from him for several months, but he always said he would move up there after his dog had died. He also had another family interested in buying the home, but he was very protective of it and wanted to keep it for himself and for me. How fortuitous it is for them that now dad is out of the picture. The wife has been corresponding with me on Facebook Messenger and has offered to get me in contact with her attorney. And she also wants first dibs on buying the land once that's an option. This was a huge shock when I originally received the message. On one hand, it's fortunate that I could maybe have tenants keeping an eye on his land and living in that beautiful home. The rent income could be used to pay his property tax amongst other things. And it does make sense that they would want to buy the neighboring land. On the other hand, that is a motive if I've ever seen one. Dad was stubborn and wouldn't give up that land to anybody, and now he's out of the picture. The family has been really helpful and kind, but it all just feels sketchy. I've acquired an attorney from a different county because my relationship with the police has turned very tumultuous. I've been frustrated at the pace of everything and have been very vocal about my disappointment. I've begged for access to his phone and laptop so I can follow up on the leads, but that's an absolute no. They've apparently met with the state police and the FBI, but I haven't heard any updates. In fact, the county police asked my uncle if he would be their contact person because I'm so difficult, to which he refused and insisted I remain the contact person. They are extremely dismissive and constantly talk over me and every call I have with them is a conference call with at least four people on their side. Very frustrating, to say the least. They printed me a flyer of his missing person case, but I haven't been able to find it on any databases myself. They said this is because I'm a civilian and it's a long process, whatever. My attorney is thinking through the possibility of renting and also contacting the police about the bear grave, his angle is to see the bear's stomach contents. Smart, I thought, without being too accusatory. I've been getting a lot of questions about an update and thought it was time to post one. Let me know what you guys think. I so appreciate this community and found so much support here. Thanks for letting me air this stuff out and get some educated opinions. Most of my friends have been avoiding this subject like it's the plague and it's left me feeling a bit isolated. With the update post striking new interest in the case, it also came with more things for Redditors to unravel. OP gave an update on still not finding his father, but did have information on a suspicious person of interest, at least to him. That would be the neighbor of his father. One of them talked with OP and mentioned that they were close with the entire police force, and if he needed help, he would do what he could. He also mentioned owning a lot of land in the area, which OP found as a red flag. I can understand why he saw it this way, but also it truly could just be someone wanting to help. What I did read off that came as very odd was the bear story. That this neighbor shot and killed a charging bear and then buried it. I'm not saying that this is out of the realm of possibility, but it just seems very far-fetched for me and apparently OP to just brush it off. It also seems odd that the police quickly jumped on the theory that it was a bear that attacked his father when there is no proof of that being the case. I mean, a month prior it was angry girlfriends and now it's a bear attack. Nothing seems to relate to anything in terms of concrete evidence. Yet the damning part that I can't ignore is what the wife of the guy who shot the bear did reaching out to OP about wanting to buy the house on his father's land, seeming very eager to do so. It's concerning that OP mentioned his father planned on living there and was very protective over that house and would never sell it. 
It could be that the neighbors knew this, and while I can see this being a very strong motive, there is unfortunately no evidence that could point to that, other than the neighbor's persistence at acquiring the house. OP finished his post by saying that the police were still moving at a slow pace and that he was becoming more and more frustrated at the lack of anything actually happening. A lot of Reddit was interested in hearing the bear story the neighbor gave and actually urged OP to have the site examined and even going as far as to search the bear's stomach contents. Sound advice, but unfortunately, no updates have been made about the case so far. I did reach out to the OP, but never got a response. It could be that he legally cannot discuss it anymore as the investigation may still be going on. He did mention his attorney often in the update post, so perhaps he was advised to keep quiet about it. Looking at OP's profile, I saw that he had made several more posts, but nothing more relating to his missing father. And with that, I hit a dead end, much like the rest of Reddit. I wanted to focus on this story for two reasons. The first being, I feel this needs more attention, and if me making a video on it can help shed some light, then I would of course want that to happen. I can't imagine what OP is going through, but I do hope that one day he is able to get some answers on the state of his missing father. The second reason I wanted to make this video was to make everyone aware that just because we see this type of stuff in TV and movies, it doesn't mean that it can't happen to any of us. I know that this video may have been shorter than my other ones and less in depth, but I am working on several projects at once right now that will soon be released. I apologize for my absence, I have been going through some personal things, but I am very much back. I thank all of you for your continued support, it truly does mean the world to me. Remember to stay safe out there friends and I will see all of you very soon. Good night.